Who doesn't love a fun day at the beach? Emerald Isle Beach officials tell me that fun can quickly turn into a dangerous situation if you're not aware and prepared. Rip currents, flags, and weather conditions are just a few things you should be checking any time you head to the beach. Officials want people to enjoy the beach and make memories, not become one. See if there's lifeguards on duty, what type of safety systems are in place. Um, and try to get as much information prior to going to the ocean. Emerald Isle Ocean Rescue Coordinator William Mathias says a situation can quickly turn dangerous if you don't know what to do, like being stuck in a rip current. You enter the ocean where your umbrella or your beach chair is at, and then in five minutes you look up and you're 30, 40, 50 feet down, staying calm, uh, not to panic, keep a rational mindset. Um, don't waste energy, don't try to swim against the current. Once we realize what we're in, then you can start planning your escape whether it's a way for help, the international wave your arms above your head distress signal, um, or if you're a, a strong swimmer, you can swim parallel to the beach strand and then back into the shoreline at a 45 degree angle. Danny Shell is a retired police commander and former member of the Emerald Isle Beach Rescue Squad. He created a group called Know Before You Go and See to continue to educate people about ocean safety. Conditions can change rapidly. I walk the beach every day about six or seven miles and I, and I have still continue to pull people out of the water. Shell says it's especially important that parents watch their children in the water and have a flotation device handy in case a situation arises. Emerald Isle uses a unified flag system that officials say is instrumental in keeping beachgoers safe with 30 flag posts lining the beaches. The yellow flag is going to be your most prevalent flag that you see along bug banks. Uh, the yellow flag does indicate a moderate condition uh, in the ocean. Uh, it's never 100% safe. You will never see a green flag flown. Uh, we are dealing with Mother Nature. We step up to our red flag. That's when we get a, a high rip current risk from the National Weather Service. Or we see local conditions deteriorate. We're getting a shorter wave period. Um, those waves in general can pack a, a lot of power and lead to traumatic injuries. Uh, we step up into a double red flag. Double red flags is uh, the ocean is closed as far as it's too dangerous. Typically, you'll see those hurricane conditions warrant that those period. And we don't want to send emergency responders into the water uh, to potentially risk their lives well, to a purple flag. Those purple flags indicate an above abundance of marine life, jellyfish, man of wars, uh, stingrays. We, you will not see us fly a purple flag for sharks for the simple fact that, again, it's their, it's their home, it's mother nature. Um, all that marine life is present at any time in the water. Uh, red over yellow flags indicate a marked swimming area that is protected by lifeguards. Officials say a good rule of thumb is to ask surfers as they're usually well aware of water conditions. They also say areas around piers and jetties or other man-made structures can heighten the risk of rip currents, so ask a lifeguard about conditions. If you're going to dig a hole in the sand, fill it back in before you leave. It creates danger for first responders trying to reach victims, and it could trap and cause injury to marine life. Be smart about it like you are with anything else that you do in life. Do your due diligence. Uh, find out what the water conditions are. It's easy to do that. And then make the smart decision for the safety of, you know, of your family or friends. Reporting, Emily Severidge, 9 on your side.